Hello everyone, Trantia here, and welcome back to Let's Play Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. So in the last episode, we played as Junpei, Yukari, and Ken, and uh, I don't know, we, we fought some stuff, we did some stuff, it was cool. And then we uh, we got to witness Mitsuru talking to Shoma Nazuki. Anyways, fake bonds. It feels like it's been a while since I've left Yukari-san and Kenkun at Juness. While wandering the fog shadowed town of Inaba, I used this time to carefully review the data on the memory card Kikino-san gave me. All these documents deal with Ergo research. Even with my calculation abilities, I won't be able to unlock the protection on that, on that final file in an uh, appreciable period of time. Big words. It's with a slight feeling of disappointment that I finally reached the entrance of Yasugami High. I stand petrified before it. The eccentric decorations in this distorted school building look familiar, but the gigantic tower looming overhead exudes intimidation much more than when I saw it from the helicopter. I look back down the path I came from and see the town spread around the hilltop I find myself on. The town of Inaba has been twisted into a mind-numbing maze, sunken into the murk of the stagnant red waters of the fog. There's nobody around. I hope everyone's okay. Before I can become absorbed by my emotions, my radar detects someone approaching. I found you. I hear a familiar voice and see a figure coming up the hill. That's... Yukun? Oh, thank goodness you're here! Yeah, I was waiting for you. I knew you'd be coming here. Huh? Something's not right. Yukun's missing something. I don't feel any kind of warmth from him. There's none of the kind consideration he has towards his friends. At the same time, my internal sensor begins to alert me of the presence of an approaching enemy, and a message transmits itself furiously into my senses. Eliminate the target shadow. You ain't Yukun. You're a shadow. Not bad, anti-shadow suppression weapon. Then again, I never intended to deceive you by taking this form. Showing up looking like Yukun. What's your game, buddy? I came to warn you. Where you are is not where you should be. Well, what are you saying? Don't get so worked up. Don't you know it? Deep down. You know that you're nothing but trouble to them. If you'd never shown up, this town would have been peaceful. They don't think of you as a friend, or just a nuisance that brought them to school. Well, that's... But they all accepted me for who I am! No matter what excuse you give, you're still just a weapon. A tool can never befriend a human, and you will never be accepted by them either. That ain't true! That can't be! I... I definitely try to deny it, but my words fail me. I am a machine, and I was created as a weapon. I... am nothing but a tool to destroy shadows. There's no way someone like me could befriend people. My heart begins to crumble. I came this far, but... What about you, Labrys? What will you, you, you do? I hope Mitsuru-san and the others are okay. Could you please go right to that tower? We'll head over there too, as soon as we can. As my heart is about to crumble, familiar voices echo in my mind. That's right, I came here with a trust in my comrades. That's why I won't falter anymore. I... I am a weapon. My body is mechanical and my heart was given to me. No matter what I wish I was, I can never be human. Oh? But... Yukun and them, Mitsuru-san and Yukari-san, and even Tenkun all think of me as someone precious. Generation anti shadow suppression weapon. I'm Labrys, a member of the Shadow Operatives. I see. Since you were just awakened to your persona, I thought you could be shaken up again. But the circumstances have changed. I'll have to change you by force. Now bring on the ring! With that, the fake Yukun draws his sword. At the same time, Four red pillars fall down from the sky and land around us. I'm trapped. This will have invisible walls, just like that other time. This closed off space won't open until one of us is defeated. In other words, I... You really want to do this, huh? Sorry, but I ain't about to hold back. <laughs> Don't underestimate me. I may be artificial, but I'm a complete cop. Based on everything there is to know about the real person, I'll prove it to you. Persona! It 
a beat! <laughs> now, show the true power of an anti shadow weapon! The real power of an anti shadow weapon is being low tier, because I'm Labris. Also, yeah, uh, if I start sounding real sassy about every time the fucking barriers come down and they have to explain that, oh, these barriers come down, they're glowing faintly, we're trapped, uh, just know it's because I'm fucking sick of hearing about it. <laughs> like, okay, you know, I was I was feeling pretty good at the start of this. Like, you know, after episode P4, I was like, yeah, man, I enjoy playing this, but. I don't know, it's just a the summary, man, and the reminding of stuff. It, it drives me crazy. I understand why they have to do it. But God, if it just ain't me. Really? Get thrown. Even though I fought fiercely, my body performed smoothly thanks to my recent maintenance. The fake Yukun had fallen to the ground in my final strike, and its form begins to bubble into a black ooze and fall apart. It really was a shadow. The melting Yukun suddenly spits out balls of golden light. These orbs pass through the school gate and fly up towards the top of the tower looming over the school building. The sounds of our battle echo away, and silence envelops the area again. <laughs> Labrasan! Kenkun! Koromaru-san! I'm overcome with surprise as Kenkun makes his way to me. Poor Marasan had been at Kenkun's side, but he dashes over to me. I'm so glad you're safe. Is something wrong? Kenkun has a worried expression. Even though the fake Yukun had been a shadow, the harsh words coming from what appear to be Yukun's face have still left me agitated, but... Nah, I'm okay. I won't be deceived any longer. We have to save the others and solve this case as soon as we can. Yeah, put the, the key bosh on this thing. Kenkun seems to notice my resolve and nods to me. If anything comes up, please feel free to talk to me about it. That is, if you're okay with sharing it with me. I think Ken could then suggest that we compare whatever information we've gathered up to now. The enemy seems to be using fakes made from shadows to challenge us to fights. Ken could reports that he encountered a copy of himself, but he was saved by Kanji and Naoto Kun in the nick of time. Thank goodness, Yukun and his friends have noticed a strange situation that has befallen this town. Yeah, it'd be kind of hard not to. I decided to tell Kenkun about what had happened a moment ago, including my own unease as well. You see, that must have been tough. Yeah, I got to wondering what I would do if the real Yukun thought the same way. And that got me all scared. <sighs> it's difficult to truly believe in other people. Kenkun? It would be easy for me to say that he'd never think that way about you. But people are weak. They can't help but believe in things that make life easier for them. That's only deceiving yourself, though. You need to have resolve if you want to learn the truth. Even if that means getting hurt yourself. Resolve. If you're worried about the truth, then I believe you should go to him directly and find out how he feels. Otherwise, you'll never be true friends. Cancun. Oh, I'm sorry for being so impolite. It's easy to tell others to learn unpleasant truths but it's more like I'm trying to convince myself. The Kormarasan stares up at me. I feel like he's telling me what Kenkun's saying is right. I should find out for myself. If Yukun and his friends are headed here as well, I'll see them eventually. I should use that time to... I see. A relationship between two people cannot be formed until they speak their minds to one another. Doing so requires this... resolve. Who's that? We stand ready at the sudden voice. A silver-haired man wearing dark blue clothing steps from the shadows of the school gate. Where did he come from? My radar didn't detect him at all. Wait, I'm still not detecting him? Who are you? Ah, how truly rude of me. My name is Theodore. I didn't intend to eavesdrop on you, but as I wandered in search of Cola, I found myself here. That blue costume. Are you connected to Elizabeth? Such a vibrant shade of blue. His distinctive clothing looks familiar. Elizabeth, the girl who I met during the previous case, who also helped me remember a number of things. 
She appeared in my dream earlier today, too, and said some deeply meaningful things before disappearing. Yeah, that happened like an hour ago. The man standing before me has an air of an air similar to hers. My! So you know of my sister. Um, Labrasan, is this person an enemy? Hmm, probably not. Elizabeth helped me realize a ton of stuff, but... Well, she came on a little strong sometimes. Oh? Was she rude to you? She once forced me to eat a large quantity of cinnamon, and I thought my mouth was going to be desiccated forever. C cinnamon Uh, please, don't worry about it. It is merely a bittersweet page from our youths. Uh, I see. Oh, right. My name's Labris. This is Kenkun and Karamaru-san. Um, they're my... Well... It's nice to meet you, Theodore. We're Labrasan's comrades. <laughs> comrades. Thank you for the polite introductions. It is a pleasure to meet you. Comrades. I was embarrassed, but the way Kenkun said it without any hesitation warms my heart. I do have many comrades right now who are with me. The way they interact with me naturally makes me think that perhaps I'm the only one who minds what I am. I feel like such a fool for being so anxious. I can't help but smile. By the way, on a different subject, has anyone seen my sister Elizabeth anywhere? Elizabeth? Nah, the last time I saw her was in a dream. I haven't seen her around here. Is that so? There's something I was meaning to ask her if I managed to find her. I saw traces of cinnamon along the road here, so I thought that she might have come this way. Elizabeth is here? She said in her dream that she was searching for power. If she happened to come across this town while it's in such a special situation, wouldn't it make sense that she would come to this tower? Ah, please forgive me. It seems I've detained you for too long. Please, do not be alarmed. I have no intention of getting in your way. Oh, that's right! We need to hurry! Labrasan, shall we get going? Huh? But... Don't we have to wait for you, Kari-san? Do you remember what that General Teddy said when he showed up on the monitor? Oh... If we don't fight and win the P1 Climax within an hour, the world will end. Yes, that's why I think it's important we rescue Mitsuru-san and the others as quickly as possible. Yukari-san will be fine. Junpei-san's strong too, after all. Kenku seems sure that Yukari-san and Junpei-san will be alright. Is this what it means to believe in others? Alright, let's go! See ya, Theodore! Please, take care. Still, where am I to obtain this cola? Theodore walks away, mumbling to himself. Then the three of us head into the school building. I forgot he showed up there. When we enter the school building, we find that the red fog has filled the halls as well, ruining our visibility. The hallways seem to go on forever, and the classrooms lining both sides are distorted. Though this is similar to the way this building had been in the TV world, the red fog increases the creepiness tenfold. The fog even mutes our footsteps as we proceed. As we walk along, Koromaru-san growls. Koromaru-san? It would seem there's someone inside this classroom. A door reading music room is slightly ajar, and the fog is pouring through the crack. I put my hand on the door. Kenkun and I silently nod to one another. I throw open the door, and Kenkun and Koromaru-san rush inside. I follow them. In the center of the music room is a cross, just like the ones we saw on the monitor in the helicopter. The person tied to it is Akiko-san. <clears throat> Sonata-san, we'll get you down at once! <sighs> Ken? Kenkun rushes over to the cross and unbinds Akiko-san. Akiko-san is quite weak, and he stumbles once he's released from the ropes. Kenkun and I hold him up on our shoulders. <sighs> Thanks for saving me, Ken. Labrus. And Koromaru, too? Sorry to barge in on you. I couldn't wait to hear your story, so I came here. <laughs> I'm glad you're so impatient. Sorry about this. I'm glad you're safe now. Where are the others? Ah, am I late again? Sorry, guys. My bad. I turn around surprised at a sudden voice from behind us. A man wearing a backwards baseball cap is standing at the music room's door. Oh, hey, Ken and Koromaru. And, um, are you Labrus? Junpei-san, it's been a long time. I'm glad you made it here. Did you run into Yukari-san along the way? 
Junpei-san, leading a personal scan, identified Junpei Iori. As I thought, he is another of Mitsuru-san's comrades from high school. He is currently listed as a member of the auxiliary staff of the Shadow Operators. Glad? You're glad about stealing the limelight from me? Kenku's expression changes, and he quietly moves his spear into combat position. Scanning. Subject confirmed as a shadow. You're on to me already, huh? Oh well, I was gonna try to hide it anyway. <laughs> I've never faced Junpei-san before. Kenkun laughs himself and takes a step forward. Koromaru-san stands close by to him. Or stands close by him. Blech. Seeing the two of them so ready for battle makes me blurt out my doubts. Hey, Kenkun, are you okay with fighting somebody who looks just like one of your buddies? I mean, aren't you afraid? Like... What if that's the real one? Tenkun smiles at me. He then explains himself in a tone of voice that makes me feel silly for doubting him. That's a silly question, Labrasan. Even if it did turn out to be the real Junpei-san, if I'm truly being challenged, then I can never back down. Truly challenged? Yes. When it comes down to it, I will stand up and fight for anything I truly believe in. Even if I must do so against my own companions. Looks like you're finally learning to talk like that, Ken. Akihiko-san! Labrys, let me tell you something. Even if the enemy you face is someone you once counted as a friend, in the battle for your beliefs, the bonds formed between true comrades will never break. Uh, are, are you trying, trying to bore me to submission? submission? Let's, Let's get, get this, this over with already. already. Bring, Bring on, on the rain! rain. The fake Junpei-san summons the Red Pillars. Akiko-san looks confused for a moment, but Kenkun explains the rules to him. <sighs> Selfish rules as always. Well, normally I'd take him on, but let me take a quick break from the fighting for now. Yes, please rest, Sonata-san. We can handle this. Akiko-san smiles happily and takes a step back. Kenkun stands firmly in front of the shadow and takes a position. His resolve is so powerful that is, this young man looks strong, even to me. But I can't fear that I'm a shed operative as well. I can do it too. Yeah, but you're low tier. Finally. I'm gonna say that I'm gonna get my ass whooped because I don't know. I for some reason I was I was doing better as Lavis. I feel like, but it's fine. It, it, it's not a matter of uh, range in range anymore. Junpei's gotta get in a bit closer. And we'll just do a bit of a launch, push him back. And go get him, Koru. This attack. Yeah. Not the time. For me to give up. There's a reason I need to get strong. Green text arrow Koru, because I did it again. Cracks from the form in the red pillars as they crumble into dust, then vanish entirely. At the same time, the form of the fake Junpei-san melts into a black vortex. The proof that we had been fighting a fake makes you feel a little relieved. Are you alright, Sonata-san? I wish I could say I was, but I'm pretty exhausted. I won't be able to call on my persona for a while. I guess that cross drains the spiritual energy from whoever's stuck on it. <coughs> Koromaru-san speaks up, as if trying to get our attention. The remains of the shadow, swirling about the center of the room, release small balls of light that rise into the void above the room. Weird. The same thing happened to the fake Yukun, too. It's flowing up. Does that mean it's being collected somehow? What in the world is that? There's something else that I've noticed. Everyone in Inaba, aside from us Persona users, has vanished. Doesn't that remind you of the Dark Hour and Tartarus? That's ominous. If I remember right from last time we were here, the enemy was trying to turn personas into shadows and collect their power. And we know all too well what happens when shadows gather in Tartarus. Sonata-san, immediately after we reached Inaba, we were attacked by someone who looked very similar to Ikutsuki. Ikutsuki? That's impossible. We saw him. Yes, though I don't know if it was really him. But one of the persona users from Inaba, Naoto-san, knew about Akutsuki. The detective, huh? <laughs> so they're running around out there, too. 
Indeed. I wanted to find an explanation to this situation as soon as possible, so we shared what we knew with each other. This is their town. No matter how much we might try to stop them, they have the right to protect this place. Mitsuru knows that at least, though it seems like she was trying to bear the entire burden herself again. And they're all incredibly skilled, too. If we can meet up with them, we'll be able to solve this case that much quicker. You made the right call, Ken. Thank you. <sighs> Ikutsuki, huh? If he's really behind this, then we're at even more of a disadvantage. Sorry, Ken, but let me make sure I've got it all straight. Now that akiko sans recovered his senses somewhat, we both explained the sequence of events we experienced up until this point. So we fell right into the enemy's trap and got ourselves captured. <laughs> How careless of us. There's no time to waste here. akiko san is far from his normal condition, but he appears to have recovered enough to be able to walk on his own. We leave the music room and decide to look for some stairs so we can head up. Since the remains of the fakes were all going upwards, we conclude that there must be something above us that they're all going to. By the way, Sonata-san, how have Mitsuru-san and the others been? I haven't seen them in a while. I hadn't seen her in a long time till I got back either. Don't worry, she hasn't changed at all. If anything, she seemed even more dreadful. <laughs> I see. I don't know if I should feel relieved or worried. What? Does Mitsuru-san scare you two? She's always really nice to me. You just don't know how frightening she can be. Try getting hit with that kick of hers. He won't eat normally for a week. She's very intense. And that's coming from me. Now that I think about it, I can't believe she was just a high school student when we met. Huh. If that's the case, then I'll try asking her to start being nicer to you two. You can't! Adult. <laughs> You don't have to get so flustered, you know? <laughs> These two have been so calm and rational when confronted with the fake Junpei-san. Seeing them so distraught over the thought of this, I can't help but laugh. Akiko-san and Kenkun smile with embarrassment. Koromaru-san walks on coolly, as if this was no concern of his. It must be rather difficult to really express your true feelings. There we go. We get a little bit less of a uh, massive summary and we get a little bit more of uh, people hanging out, having a good time. Uh, well, let's see here. What chapter is this? this is chapter six stuff? Chapter six stuff as well. You know what? Seems that we're already with them. Let's just let's just continue on with the crew that we're just with. Now that I've recovered from whatever their cross was doing to me, I have enough strength to walk on my own. Still, it seems that whatever wounds I suffered are greater than I thought. After we leave the music room, we climb up a flight of stairs and step into a covered passage. I don't know what the signs in this place mean, or even if they hold any meaning anymore now that the city has become distorted, but it would seem that something called the classroom building is up ahead. We proceed down a long hallway that appears to go on endlessly. I can't tell whether the haze I see is because of the strange fog or my own fuzzy consciousness. I'll be sure to return the favor with my fists. While I've been on the cross, I've been thinking the entire time. We were the core of the Shadow Operatives, but we'd all fall into the enemy's hands so easily without any hope of escape. My own powerlessness frustrates me. But even then, I kept calm. We still have comrades, Ken, Koromaru, and now our new member, Labrys. They've grown so much, and they were able to save me even after I made such a colossal blunder. Is that gunfire right here? The sounds ring out continuously as if a battle is taking place nearby. We run in the direction the sounds are coming from. What the? What is this place? It doesn't feel like anywhere else. Sonata-san, this... Talk about having bad taste. Whoever's doing this really wants this to be the entrance to hell. This is the entrance hall to that tower, Tartarus. A few years ago, we would gather here day after day to challenge a seemingly infinite labyrinth. Except our leader would most of the time go off by himself and just clear things a, a long time and just leave us there at the bottom because he was trying to level up or something. Uh, <laughs> we lost and gained so much here. A number of emotions flicker through my mind. Mitsuru-san! What, she's down here? Labyrinth's voice echoes across the hall. I turn to look and see Mitsuru up on a cross in the corner of the room. Her head hangs low, and she seems to be unconscious. That cross must be draining her power, just like what happened to me. 
Coruscant. We'll get you down at once. Look out! When we try to rush to her side, a barrage of bullets rakes across the floor, striking sparks in front of us. When this torrent of gunfire finally dies away, the air is filled with white smoke, quite unlike the red fog that drifts about the area. Confirming the presence of additional targets for elimination. Seriously, you can come in one after another. I guess. Oh, there should be no problem. You can stay here and watch while I deal with them. It should take no time at all. Additional targets for elimination? Who? There were other people who had apparently been fighting Igus, rather this fake Igus when we showed up. Yukun! Akihiko-san! Labrys! Uh, master? Labrys is here too? I immediately understand the situation. The rules of the fights here state that battles must be one-on-one, -on -one, and I see those red pillars surrounding you, his friends, and the fake Igus. Most likely, you have been fighting Igus while protecting Yosuke and Shie, who are already exhausted. The battle itself is one-on-one, -on -one, but there's no rule saying that you can't attack your opponent's companions if they happen to be in the ring at the same time. And it looks like it's a fair game to attack us as well. Seriously, these rules are only convenient for the enemy and they're really getting on my nerves. The situation, though, the Bretonians of Inaba, their skills and abilities are far beyond the ordinary. To think that they would be cornered this badly. What's going on? You did this, didn't you? As Labrys lashes out in confusion and anger, the shadow taking Argus' form enters with a twisted smile. Of course, of course I did, sister. I am a weapon. It is my mission to follow orders and eliminate all targets. Now, sister, why are you getting in my way? Get in your way? As you may have guessed, I am a duplicate of Igus. But I am such an exact copy of her specifications that I may as well be the real thing. I will carry out my master's orders. I cannot comprehend why you, a fellow machine, are trying to prevent me from carrying out my task. <gasps> You're a tool, just as I am, sister. Unfortunately, you were stolen in the previous battle. And now, we must be enemies. The shadow operatives control you, while I take my orders from my master. Isn't that the only real difference between us? True. I'm doing this to my own free will! Free will? Is that what you base your argument on? Our memories are nothing but data, ones and zeros in our minds. How can you prove that what you know is true? That your mind wasn't written over? A straightforward calm claim, a uh, straightforward claim with the cold logic of a machine. This isn't good. I guess it's probably the closest person to Labrys. And like this fake said, if we really wanted to use Labrys as a weapon, we could probably manipulate her memories to some extent. On top of that, there's no way to prove to Labrys that we've never done something like that to her. Damn, what a move. Labrys' faith in this must be... Hey, Labrys! Sonata-san, let's lead this to her. I'm sure she'll be fine. Ken has his eyes fixed on Labrys, even as he calls out to me. I see. These guys have just met, but they've already formed a bond through whatever battles they've faced so far. They believe in one another. Sorry about that. You're right. I should trust in her. Sister, friendship and trust means nothing to the likes of us. Yet you still attempt to fight me. You're wrong. <clears throat> I'm an anti-shadow weapon, too. I... I can understand what you're saying. But there's something I'm even more sure of. I just told me that going through the joy and pain of different things made her into who she is now. I remember that. And now I remember that the reason why I can stand here and fight you is thanks to all our sisters who died to make me who I am. Those are painful memories. But if I forgot them, I wouldn't exist. That's what I'll fight for. He ain't made up. These memories are my own that I formed with everybody else. They aren't fake. They're my heart. Labrys. Labrys. Understood. Master, I have a request to make. The fake Igus calls out into thin air. This creature, a lump of shadow, has a master? Who in the world should be calling out to? Testing, testing. What's this? A dumb old machine calling me up? What nerve? I'm a busy bear. Forgive me. 
but I have a favor I must ask of you. Ah! Please lift the barriers on this battlefield and allow these people to come inside. Huh? You want to let us in? I want to fight them. I wish to crush all their bonds before my sister's very eyes. What? Oh, for Pete! When you make a copy of a real person, the copy gets all the quirks of their personality, too! Ah! Well, rather than getting persona fragments from those dried-up old husks, you might get fresher ones from those guys. Persona fragments? Oh, did I say too much? Anyway, let's have a ring change! As the voice of the vulgar fake Teddy Teddy calls out, new red pillars ascend and the old pillars shatter into response. The new pillars drive into the four corners of the room, making this entire place into a fighting arena. You! Are you alright? Yosuke-kun! Chie! They rush over to you and his friends to check on them. Good. None of them seem to be that badly hurt. After confirming they're safe, we turn to face the fake Aegis again. Thank you for inviting us in before your battle completed. But we're not going to show you any mercy. There is no need to thank me. I am about to eliminate all of you right now, after all. Time for me to make a comeback as well. This is a grudge match now. You guys seem a little different from what I was expecting you to be. But I won't be fooled. I'll protect everyone with all my strength. Grudge match, baby. See, the funny part is that I wanted to pick Ken, but when Akiko was saying it's a grudge match, I just couldn't say no. Well, what the fuck? I just like I teleported. Nothing personal, kid. <laughs> but uh, oh, really? You, you shadow did that thing, and now like you walk him, like this like, went right through you. Uh, anyways, uh, Ken's got the reach. I like the reach because I'm bad. But uh, I don't know. Like I said can't let the man down. He wanted a, a comeback battle. We're gonna give it to him. And we're gonna. Oh, you're gonna break that shit, huh? Break this one. You can't. You won't. Ow. I, uh, kind of stopped hitting any buttons. Ooh, wow, the rush down. Look at that shit. That was insane. Rise up. That's what I'm doing. Something about society. Ow. Okay, burst. Burst. What did that move even do? I think it did. Oh, it's, it's making me hit with electricity. Sick. Wow. That was amazing. I love doing cool stuff in this game. Because it makes me remember that I uh, I did it by hitting like no buttons, and it just it just looks cool. Spectacle sport, spectator sport. Love to see it. The fake Igus falls to its knees, and its body turns black as it becomes a shapeless mass. I see a hint of pain in Lavish's eyes as she watches. Looks like we've won. You don't, you don't need, need to, to look, look at me like, like that. that. Either, Either way, we, we only have a limited lifespan. What do you mean? We, we were created, created for the sole purpose of fighting you. Once that duty has been carried out, all we have left to do is expire. Fighting is your duty. I will not bid you good luck. I wish for my master to emerge victorious, if possible. With that, the fake Igus loses all cohesion, falling into a dark puddle on the floor. Eventually, that begins to flow upward, like a film of syrup being poured in reverse, until it completely disappears. That's one way to put it. We watch this process to the very end while we think about our troubles. <coughs> Koromaru, who had been sitting at our feet, runs off. That's right, this isn't time to be sentimental. We have to rescue Mitsuru. Ken and Labras run to the cross Mitsuru is hanging from. I go with Koromaru to speak to Yu's group. Master! Thank you, Akihiko-san. That was too close. What's a dog doing here? I mean, he's adorable, but... Sorry for causing you such trouble. It seemed like you were facing quite a difficult fight. Ooh, I'm ashamed to call myself your student. No, I should be thanking you. I'm sorry if you were all worried. I decided to exchange information with Yuzgrub about the circumstances leading up until now in the situation in Inaba. 
they're surprised to learn that Ken and Koromaru are not only Persona users, but Shadow operatives. Our conversation turns to the reason why you and his friends were having such a hard fight. Contrary to my suspicions, it seems the three of them made it to this room almost unscathed. Then why did the fake eyes give them such trouble? It's true that Shadow's taking our appearance in summon Personas, and there's no mistake that they make extremely powerful opponents. But are they so strong that they could hurt these three skilled fighters that badly? Nah, that's not it. When we got to this weird room, we found Mitsuru-san up on a cross. So Chia and I rushed over to get her down, but there was somebody there. It wasn't the fake Igus? No, I don't think so. I didn't see a face, but the voice sounded like a guy. You didn't see his face? How far away could he have been? Well, he was kind of standing in the shadows. And the moment I saw his red eyes, my whole body froze up like I was petrified or something. That's right. When I went in to save them, I was attacked by a persona I've never seen before. Red eyes. And a persona? This doesn't make sense. Previously, the enemy said himself that he doesn't have a persona. Could this mean that there's someone else helping him? Someone with a persona and powerful enough to overwhelm even you? Mitsuru was here. Perhaps she knows something. I moved to where Ken and Labus are trying to get Mitsuru down off the cross, but they appear to be having some trouble. This thing's not coming apart. What gives? It was easy enough to get Akihiko-san off of his. I'm not having any luck either. Damn it, why? Mitsuru-san, please wake up! The two desperately called him Mitsuru while trying to undo the restraints binding her arms and legs. At that moment, Koromaru stares fixedly at the door and gives a low growl as if to warn us. What's wrong, Koromaru? Is someone there? Someone's coming this way. Footsteps approach at a leisurely pace down the hallway. As they grow louder, the tension here in the entrance hall increases. Eventually, the footsteps stop. As Shadow reaches from the doorway all the way to the center of the room, it wavers in the illumination of the fog. It can't be. You're... So I wasn't seeing things. Shuji Akutsuki. An unforgettable betrayal, an unfathomable insanity. Seeing him again, the spinning image of when I last saw him brings back what he said. The death of everything, but also the beginning. Three years ago, we made an extreme we made extreme sacrifices with an end to his plans. Does this mean he has come crawling out of hell to torment us once again? Ooh, and that's where we leave off. Maybe it was him the whole time. I don't know. We'll figure that out. Well, as much as I would say, as much as I would love to say, we'll figure that one out next time. Who knows? Because, like, I mean, this chapter wasn't necessarily that super long. I mean, that was, that was, what I just did was pretty short in comparison to everything else so far. But hey, a bit of a shorter one uh, to start off the week. I think this is going up on the Monday. Uh, <laughs> anyways, next time, we're going to be looking from Yukari's perspective and see what the hell her and Teddy were up to, because that's... I, I, ooh, ooh, I feel sorry for Yukari. I feel bad for Sam Regal having to read that shit. Anyways, until next time, I'm Trentia, and you guys have a good day.